There we go. Here we go. You there. There's a shield in your hand. Block with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. Lieutenant, don't hold back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. We've received a number of recruits. Locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. That wasn't my idea. I'd be concerned if it was. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation it caused. Sir. Cassandra sought a solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. The Conclave destroyed. A giant hole in the sky. Things aren't looking good. Which is why we're needed. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. Oh, baby. You want a bang? No, but if you have one prepared, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Another time, perhaps. I, uh... <clears throat> There's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, the right has a report that the smirk. Lines. As I was saying. He's like, meow. <coughs> oh, shit. I'm not into doors. What do I say? The Herald of Adrasi is going to be pissed. Alright, let's talk to him, see his exposition. Sure, it will be amazing. Yes? Yes? Are you with me? Did you leave anyone behind in Kirkwall? No. I fear I made few friends there, and my family's in Ferelva. No one special caught your interest? I can't say I was looking. Honestly, I... I was not good company back then. I might enjoy your company. I... If I've made you think otherwise... I have so many responsibilities, and... I would hope for your friendship, but cannot offer more. No! <laughs> he shot me down! <laughs> Don't say that to me! I'm gonna run off into the force and cry, where no one can see me. Can I stealth? I'm gonna stealth. Oh, I can't stealth. <laughs> No one look at me cry. I'm crying in stealth mode. Oh, oh, he doesn't like me because I'm four feet tall. <laughs> I'm going to show him. I'm going to get with I'm gonna get with Iron Bolt. He's like nine feet tall. He's way taller than you, Cohen. Fuck you. You're a dick. I hate you. <laughs> now... Cullen is a uh, romance option for human and elven women. Now, partially this is for story reasons. Um, as a Templar, he has a lot of dealing with elves and humans because elven humans are the primary uh, followers of the Chantry, and elven human mages are part of the Chantry. Number one, number two, there's actually elves that are Templars. At least it was planned to be so in the books before they sort of changed it at the last second. So you know, he sees a lot of human and elf chicks. He's into human and elves, you know, that makes sense. But the thing is, is um, the real main reason he's only into humans and elves is because they added his romance late in the game when they said, hey, we could add a romance to this character. So they added his romance late in the game. And they're like, well, we're going to have to animate all these scenes with one year left. So to make it easier for us, let's have them racially gated so that we don't have to, you know, fuck around and make the scene where, you know, he's trying to bang the, uh, you know, a dwarf chick and the dwarf chick is really short and then they have to frame the scene in a weird way if you have a judge with humans and elves obviously it's much simpler the same thing with the kunara chick kunara chicks are like seven feet tall so you'd have to frame that scene in a weird way as well so uh they gated them to that end now they did the same thing with solace where they also gated solace uh race gated him so that he's only into female uh elves and it, it's the same thing it's like partially it's a story thing you know he's an elf he's into elves but mostly, it's a um, mostly it's a, an animation thing. I mean, like, you can make this similar arguments for why wouldn't Cassandra? Why would Cassandra be into other races? But 
you know, she was a core romance, they had enough time for her. Whereas Cullen, you know, got added at the last second, he didn't get that benefit of the doubt. And uh, with that said, let's go back to talking with Cullen. Why would Templars break away from the Chantry? The Order believes the Chantry no longer supports their efforts. Not to the extent they should. The Templars have served the Chantry for ages. And in that time, they've come to take the Order's services for granted. Templars risk their lives against blood magic, demons, abominations. I feel as if those efforts are dismissed. I may disagree with the Order's actions. That I'm here is proof of that. I sympathize with their frustrations. I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in status. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You are a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. That wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfiguration wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Why did you join the Order? When I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local Chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. I must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The Knight Captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. Still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Do the Templars do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so. It's not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession of the least. You've lived in the Circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. The Templars and mages never speak to each other? Some do. But Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charters. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. 
You know, um, considering all the questions my character is asking about the circle, I wonder what, uh, if I played a human mage, I wonder if she would ask as many questions, or maybe the questions would be slightly differently worded, because a lot of the questions she's asking about how the circle works, where a human mage would have been part of the circle, it's probably the only, it's only race class combination that's part of the circle, all the other race class combinations are either, obviously, A, not a mage, or B, an apostate who n was never part of the circle either. They're an elf who's Dalish, or they're a Canari who's just part of some mercenary warband, and just, you know, learned it on their own, so. You know, that's an interesting question, something to keep an eye out on, if I ever do a, uh, a human mage playthrough, which, you know, one day, uh, five years from now when I'm getting ready for, you know, Dragon Age 4, I'll bother with it for now. You know, fuck that. Templars take vows. I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages, that sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given the filter, your first draft of Lyrium and its powers. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Yes? Holy oh, shit, this guy has so much to say, it's amazing. I should get to know you better. We're working together, after all. What would you like to know? Alright. Where are you from? Are they giving, I guess this I is Kodak country. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed at Ferelden's Circle Tower. The Circle had troubles of its own. I remained there during the Blight. What happened at the Circle Tower? You who survived the Blight have fond memories of that time. I would prefer not to speak. You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between mages and Templars fell apart. They blew up the Chantry, the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. And he's basically recounting the, uh, the events of, um, Dragon Age 2, which wasn't that great a game. You know, it's a game that on paper, the, the, the ideas worked, but it was, I would say, compared to other Bioware games, very, very poorly executed. Now, because there's not exactly a lot of Bioware clones, in the grand scheme of things, it's still a pretty okay game. I'd still say it's like it's a good game. But that's because you're grading games, you know, by their competitors and by where, you know, for better or worse, doesn't have any. So, you know, whatever. And in, in any case, he's explaining, you know, his views or, you know, his take on what happened in Dragon Age 2. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. What happened then? The Templars should have restored order. The Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion. Turned on her own men. I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too fast her. I stood with the champion against her in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. Varys from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely of Varys. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's bad for my health.
I'll let you return to your work. Should you require anything, I'll be here. Was there something you needed? Okay, that's it. This other stuff is just like random lines he has about uh, plot developments and other party members and shit. Like, what do you think of the people you see, work with? What do you think about the people you, you work mean? with? Talk about the soldiers. Talk about you know Josephine, shit like that. Are you satisfied with the Inquisition's forces? Our numbers are small, but they suit our needs for the time being. Some Templars have joined us instead of following the order. They've proven invaluable in training new recruits. Shit like that. I should let you get uh, back to work. Well, he, um, that does it for our characters. At least I'm pretty sure it does it for our characters, most of our characters. Uh, the characters you missed anyways. In that case, uh, Colin, a little bit of backstory. Colin is a, he was a side character in Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. He was like some Templar guy who would be wandering around. He would, he's basically the reoccurring Templar dumbass dude. And uh, various scenes in those games. Now, uh, he wasn't really an important character. He was just more like a character who was like there. He was like a dude who was there and survives no matter what. And because, you know, they, I'm guessing they did that so that they could have, you know, like a character who uh, who has some sort of like reoccurring backstory when he's in those different locations. So it's like, oh, look, this character was here. And this character was also here again. Oh look, it's that guy from that one place as opposed to just having new random red shirts. Uh, as a side effect of that, he has uh, he survived some crazy events. And because of that, he is a great source of knowledge for the Inquisition. That's why he's here. He has something of a, of a following with some of the fangirls who really like one of his plot beats from one of the specific origins from like the mage origin. Like if you play like a mage female warden in Dragon Age Origins, you could like hit on him and then he gets like really nervous and runs away and for that reason he's has sort of a hardcore following amongst people who like to write fan fiction you know god bless them that's what they like i like uh, to just be a a jerk um so yeah that's it i mean he was in the first two games and he got minor roles and he got promoted to party not really the party party but he's you know more or less in the party um so there you go that's cullen that's all solace now, after saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure we talked to everyone on Sol right after Solus, now this time, I really am sure we talked to everyone that we didn't talk to in the videos. That said, expect the next video to also have this stupid-ass dwarf in it again, because I am a stupid-ass. If not, expect to just randomly see me back with my, uh, my human warrior without mentioning anything, because of course, I do not have a time machine. For my human warrior, from human warrior playthrough to realize that he fucked up. Because right now I'm actually like 40 hours into the game. And, uh, um, the human warrior. Anyways, that's it. That's it for the new food time, the new food show, the new food channel. I'll see you soon. Holy shit, do you see that fucking chick's head just clip? I just want, I want this. And it fucking this. Oh, look at that. It did it again, but not as much. Either case, that's it. Um, see you soon. See you soon. I love you all. Uh, see you then.